Hi, it is Dwyer. Today is Saturday, April 18th, 2020. RichardDwyer.com, my law firm site, and keepingitfree.blogspot.com, a financial blog that I run that's gotten over a million views. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, people know where I stand on the pandemic, on the economic lockdown that is in place. I have some earlier videos here online. I would encourage folks to take a look at those videos if they're interested. Let's talk about some revelations that I expect the government to make. Right, some rolling revelations as our economic depression goes forward. This is just one man's opinion. I want you to use your own. But I want everyone to just be aware of each other's points of view. I hope you leave yours in the comment section of this video. I believe in time. The first revelation. Government will tell you that its coronavirus projections were way off. That many people, much more than expected, are asymptomatic. That more than 10% of the population is likely infected. Understand, in Germany, where they've tested much more than we have here in the United States, Porter Stansberry, the investment guru, points out that they determined in a pandemic hotspot based on testing that 14% of the population, 14% had coronavirus antibodies, that they were immune to the disease because they had already been infected and had developed antibodies. Well, let's just do the math. Germany has more than 80 million people. That would mean that more than 10 million Germans are infected with the coronavirus. I believe the numbers are similar here in the United States. And let me just say that when the asymptomatics are included in the numbers, the lethality rate of the virus drops exponentially to the point where the rationale for a stay-at-home lockdown is no longer valid. Right? I believe the lockdown needs to stop. I believe that this lockdown took place when we didn't know enough to have a lockdown. I believe the government is going to tell you that itself. Let's move to the next revelation. I believe that the government, and I'm going to include here state and local governments, will tell you that they can't pay you. And I'm talking to police officers, firefighters, teachers, the pension benefits that they promised. You know, that was already the case. The pension fund insolvency before the coronavirus hit the United States in states like Illinois, Kentucky, and New Jersey. Right, folks? Simply put, the money is not there. The community leaders and insiders elected to make the pensions investment decisions didn't have the prowess needed to generate the expected 7 to 8 percent rate of returns in a world where the Federal Reserve suppressed interest rates to historical lows. Right? I had a friend who was interviewing for a high-level job in the public sector and they told him that their pension plan 
was going to have an 8% rate of return. And he talked with me about it because he knows I follow markets. And I asked him a simple question. I said, who's running the plan? Warren Buffett? Ray Dalio? Right? If Joe Smo is running the plan, you're not going to get the 8%. It's just not happening. Understand, once you start cutting the expected rate of return and ask yourself, who do you know other than Jeff Bezos, who's getting greater than 8% right now in the stock market? Right? How could you make money on bonds when bonds are not only yielding, you know, 2% and less, but further come with a currency risk, right? With a bond, you'd get paid in dollars, and of course, the dollar is under pressure. Let's move to the third revelation, right? And I believe these will be rolling. In other words, after a passage of time, as we get into this depression that's going to last at least 18 months, Right? You're going to hear this news, and it's going to be big. Right, Eventually, the Federal Reserve will tell you, in my opinion, this is all an opinion video, that it can no longer control interest rates, that the fiat money printing has led to a loss of confidence in the dollar. Right, Understand that lenders have to believe in the dollar to be willing to accept 2% or less on the 10-year. The minute they feel that the dollar is just being printed ad nauseum to give out billions and trillions of dollars in bailouts, right? that's when lenders are going to start asking for higher interest rates. This is the way it's always happened in history. There's going to be a time where interest rates revert to not the historical norm, but to a figure above the norm. It's going to overshoot at first. And I'm just telling you that's going to have major consequences. Finally, the last point raised in this video. The government will tell you, in my opinion, that many of the businesses that recently received the post-coronavirus bailouts have ceased to exist. Because understand, many were zombie companies living off low interest rate debt that couldn't survive in a world where interest rates are determined not by the Federal Reserve, but by the free market. Right? We're giving bailouts, folks, to economic entities that are not financially viable. Right? I think that the government is going to tell you that it needs to raise your taxes to cover the shortfall because some of these companies failed, as if capitalism doesn't already have creative destruction. Right? Anyway, it's my hope that we follow the Warren G. Harding model of the early 20s in addressing this depression and not the FDR model of the early 30s, which, according to many, Thomas Sowell, for example, led to a longer and deeper depression with more poverty and more misery, right? Right now, in my opinion, government is coming off a historically bad stretch. I cannot believe how many bad decisions the government is making one right after the other, right? Perhaps it's because it's an election year and politicians are trying to get votes, not shorten the depression. But if we're serious, if we're serious about attacking this depression, then government is going to have to find a way to reduce its spending. 
government is going to have to find a way to allow zombie companies to fail. Right? Government is going to have to find a way, quite frankly, to tell pension beneficiaries that they're not going to get what they were promised because we can't afford it. Anyway, that's one man's opinion. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me close by saying it's clear looking at the pattern of the coronavirus that the coronavirus does not do well in warm weather. Right? But when the weather gets cold again in the fall, the coronavirus might come back. Understand, the Spanish flu came back. Right? The coronavirus might come back in the fall. I hope by then we have the common sense not to shut down our entire economy again. Right? First, I hope the current shutdown ends soon. Then I hope once we start to realize the economic damage done by the shutdown, that we're all more experienced and savvy in realizing that we cannot shut down the economy again in the fall for a virus like this one that has a low lethality rate compared to the Spanish flu, for example. Anyway, that's how I see it. I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.